Well, hello, internet friends near and far. Welcome to the final episode of Parks and Conversation. And this whoa, is... Wait, wait. Whoa, what? What do you mean? Like we're done? Well, with this series... Of Parks and Rec. Of Parks and Rec, yeah. Okay. So Parks and Conversation <sighs> will also come to a ignoble conclusion. I don't know if I use that word right, but because it'll be a new show in the future. Yeah. Right? Okay. You just worried me. We hadn't discussed that. So I was like, oh, wow. All right. Well, we is Jason. That's me. And then the other voice is J- Jeremy. Say hello, Jeremy. Hey, that's me. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. So good. So good. <laughs> strong, strong start. Strong start to the finale. <laughs> yeah. You know, the best way to, you know, wrap up a conversation around a show Mm -hmm. that's taken three years is to not realize that you're wrapping up the conversation around the show. Yeah, I forgot that's what we're doing today. All right. That's the last show. So (laughs) let's do this. uh, And we'll do like, we we talked about doing a, a retrospective, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we'll do that, but this is like the last like legit thing that we have from the, uh, Oh. The Parks Universe, because I mean, we already did the COVID special right. as episode two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're uh, we don't need to go back and do that again because that was not amazing. It was a thing that happened. It was a thing that happened when we were all desperate for things to happen. Yeah, man. John Krasinski uh, was telling us about good news. I mean, it seems like so oh, long man, ago. Man, that's right. right. Oh goodness. Yeah. Ah, uh, that was. It was simpler times when we were afraid for everything. <laughs> and now it's more complicated times where we are also afraid for everything. Yeah. But this time in our fear for everything, we can leave the house. <laughs> it's true. So it's even more scary. <laughs> you mean other people are going to be out there? <laughs> so, yeah, we don't have to take shifts to go to the grocery store. Wipe down your, yeah. wipe down everything you bring into your oh. house. <laughs> oh my word. Uh, and we laugh, but you know, uh, COVID is still out there, everybody. So please be safe. Jeremy just had COVID. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, yeah, it was. We, my, my entire family got it pretty much. And, uh, like twice, I think back to like in a row, I think we actually mutated our own strain within our household. So congratulations. It just kept going around like a nest of bats. What is a, what is a group of bats called? Gross. Yeah. Yeah. Gross of bats. Gross of about 144 bats. That's all. <laughs> they kick everybody else out. Wow. Numbers joke. Awesome. Is 144 a gross? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like if you buy a gross of something, like I'll have 144 like donuts, a, a please. A dozen dozens? Yeah. It's a dozen dozen. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. Huh. But a baker's gross is more. Because it's 13. Thir- 12 dozens? 13s, I think. Or maybe it's 13 13s. I don't know. No, it'd be 12 13s. Yeah, yeah. Not 13 dozens. Mm-mm. But I guess that would work out the same. I think, yeah, based on math. 12 times 13 and <laughs> 13 times 12, those are the same. <laughs> Which brings us to 2005. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a thing on the internet. Uh-huh. We're going great. Yeah, perfect. I saw a meme that was like, unpluralize a movie. Oh, yeah, and like Jaw. Yeah, like Jaw. And the one right under that, I, Jaw was the example. The one right under that was... A crow on the Orient Express. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so I thought that was great. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about the uh, the series finale. Mm-hmm. Uh, their title is One Last Ride. And uh, this is, you know, it starts with the, the, the team in the park's office. For some reason, Ben has an office. Gary has an office. He's the mayor, but they're starting in the parks office to recap the parks time uh, that they all had. And uh, we're jumping in midstream here with Leslie talking about 2005 and the Circle Park renovation and Tom joining the team and everybody is bored out of their mind as Leslie is sharing all of this. And Ron is like, can we just hit the highlights? (laughs) Can we keep moving? Mm -hmm. Uh, And so Leslie starts looking through her note cards and then decides on whether or not to get up they talk about the pod based coffee machine uh, and Gary and Leslie wrote a number about it, which pays off later. And uh, April uh, is just like, can we just shake hands, pretend like we liked each other and get out of here? And 
And Ron's like, I'm all for that. And they both just stand up and shake hands and uh, they would be happy there. Uh, but Les is like, no, we'll never be together again. And like this. And then some guy comes in and asks to fix a swing. Uh, and uh, they're like, no, we can't do that. Come back in two hours. <laughs> and none, so, none of us work here. Yeah. None of us work here. We're just in the room, uh, which is so weird. Who are you and, people? Uh, and so, but Andy is like, anything is possible if you follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. Johnny Karate. Vote for so, me and all your dreams will come true. Yeah. Vote for Pedro. Oh man, that movie's good. Um, yeah. And so the guy's like, all right, well, I'll come back later. And then let's like, no, we will help you. Cause that's what we do. We help people. And so, and this is probably, I think the best part of the, like the, the reason for this episode. And I think it's so great is forget about these old stories. Let's make new, a new one. Mm -hmm. And watching this episode again, I just remembering like, this is a clip show for the future. Right. Right. Instead of a retrospective, let's look ahead. And so while these, these stories and these characters are no longer going to be filmed for this weird documentary about a parks department in Indiana, they're still going to make stories. They're still going to continue on. We just don't, don't get to see them all, which I like. That's a good framing. Uh, for how to end this 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 series? Yeah. So and, they, al uh, and also good framing is the guy who comes in to to get the swing fixed to start the whole thing is played by the same guy. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming in this universe he was the guy in the slide that Leslie pushes was down. He really? Yeah. John Daly, the actor. I don't know what his character's name was. Drunk guy in a slide. So even even this guy that we hadn't seen, but the bookend guy. He had an arc because he comes in clean shaven in a suit asking for a swing to be fixed, assuming, you know, we're, I'm, I'm hoping he has kids and he's trying to make his area nicer too. So he, he's come full circle, which is pretty great. Yeah. I do like that. Good job. Wow. Good job guys. Look what, look what getting pushed down a slide with a broom can do to change your life. Yeah. Publicly. Yeah. Public shame still works guys. Still works. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so they decide to fix the swing. Everybody's all in. And then Jerry, Gary comes out <laughs> dressed as a coffee pot and he starts singing the song. <laughs> and uh, I love Tom. He's like, Gary, come on. You're the mayor now. Have some dignity. <laughs> uh, so they uh, decide that they're going to fix this slide but the or the swing. And the problem is they don't have any logins. They don't have any access to current information. Um, and so the first step is to, to fill up the requisite the equipment recreation form um, and uh, they're kind of hosed here. But then Donna is like, Oh, I found one in Leslie's scrapbook. Thanks form the memories. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So for some reason she was keeping scrapbooking blank forms, which was a whole thing. Um, so yeah. So they start by filling out the form and throughout the episode, Leslie will address each cast member and touch them. And through her magical planning powers, she will be able to see glimpses of their future. And we, as the viewers, are invited in along the ride into the future. Now, do you think she saw the future or do you think this was just a device so that we can see the future? I think it's... I think... This is where the show takes a mystical turn. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> and she can see the future. She that's set why it up from the beginning. Yes. Yes. And that's why she's always been uh, so detail oriented and planned out. It's like, if I get all of the steps right, this future will come to pass. Or maybe she's a time traveler. And so she's able to stop time so that she can get all of those things done at night. Like sew pillows and bake cookies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, she's got maybe that thing that Hermione had, that clock that she could take multiple classes at one time. Yeah, the time turner. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Who can, who who can say? But it's probably just like, this will be a good way to end the show. I don't think Leslie really has... Powers. Powers, because she doesn't actually exist, so... Mm. All right. Yeah. You know this isn't a true story, right? Oh. The way it was, I mean, I've seen documentary. I mean, the way they look at the camera, they talk, they yeah. interviews. Yeah. I, I mean, it was basically a Michael Moore 
documentary, right? It was like a really it, long. It was it was Roger and me. Uh, yeah, Pawnee and me. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so, <laughs> okay. Well, sorry, man. Uh, sorry to break it to you, but they uh, they start they fill out the form and then they got to go up to uh, the like she's thanking Donna and this is the first picture that we have. Um, and she asks when do you guys leave for Seattle? And so she's, cause she's moving out there. She got, she has to get a real estate license. And so, uh, so as soon as that goes through, she's going forward. And so then she, we get this picture of Leslie, of Donna showing a house for 3,400 square feet and a view of Puget Sound where you can see them building the new space haystack around the space needle. I got to say, I think this was one of one of the weakest jokes in the entire series. And I'm biased because I live in Seattle and I think the haystack and the needle, I get it. But no, no, I also Sorry, like, that's kind of dumb. Yeah, I don't really like that at all. But I did like uh, that it's 2023 and they predicted yeah. the massive, you know, housing boom. Yes. And it was, you know, earlier this year, it's, it's slowed down, but holy smokes, the last year, I mean, the last couple of years has been insane up here. So yeah. once again, predicted the future. My question is, where are you going to find a 3,400 square foot house that can, has a view of Puget Sound and the Space Needle? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Capitol Hill. I guess, but is there anywhere in Capitol Hill? That actually has a 3,400 square foot house. I don't know. There's some big houses up there. and it's- There are, but they're actually on the like, <laughs> other side of the hill where you can't see. Oh, sorry, Queen Anne. Anne. Queen Anne Hill. Queen Anne. How about that? Uh, backside okay, of Queen, Queen Anne. Anne. But if it's on the backside, you can't see the sound. When I say back, I, I mean the south side. Okay. <laughs> I thought you meant the back, which the back, is the east, the as north. everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a whole other discussion, but we can't. we don't have time for this. Okay, what is the, so back, what is the back side? How does a hill work? That's what I mean. <laughs> so south side of Queen Anne. Yeah, all right. I think. So a 3,400 square foot house uh-huh, uh-huh. on the south side of Queen Anne. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, what was right, as she's recapping this with, with Joe, is it sold in two hours. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably, so crazy. And probably sold for well over asking. Yeah. Like easily... Forty-eight million dollars. <laughs> it was listed at two hundred eighty thousand. <laughs> it was a bidding war. It, like it was awful. People died, <laughs> but this nice uh, Chinese family is going to store their motorcycles there. <laughs> so what? Because there's so many people who are just buying homes, oh, like from yes, yes. other countries, Vancouver like China and, and, and yeah. no, and, uh, yeah, and, yeah, Van- <laughs> Vancouver, Washington, Vancouver. <laughs> British Columbia. Yeah, like there's a lot of international buyers that are just buying houses and yeah. So anyway, it's crazy how this Seattle market is. Um, but yeah, I do not like the space needle joke. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Let's end it there. Let's okay. call it. All right. So <laughs> Brooklyn nine, nine. Yeah, that's the next. Uh, so Donna and Joe are talking at their house. Okay. Oh, another problem with this whole Seattle <laughs> dynamic that I have is how bright the light is when they're showing the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's real. <laughs> like I, I mean, it's sunny right now, but it is like you look outside and it's like, look at all the happiness out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not really a thing here. I mean, um, there's, there is a window of about 17 days where that's true. Yeah. And then that same, that same evening, then they are outside eating dinner and they have like a outdoor fireplace, (laughs) which is great. But I don't think, I don't know if anybody in Seattle has anything like this. Yeah. You you have an outdoor fireplace and you use it about 17 days a year. Yeah. Even with a cupboard. Yeah. There's no place. There's, it's just not believable. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. It's just irresponsible. (laughs) (laughs) I like how we've suspended our belief, our disbelief up until this point. And now that they are talking about actual Seattle, you're like, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I'm from here. So like it, it's hard to suspend your disbelief when it is a place that you know is real. Right. <laughs> like this isn't how this place works. Much like middle- the only thing they got right was how expensive it is. <laughs> Much like uh, middle Korea. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> That was great. Uh, thank you for getting me back to the positive. Um, because. 
they're talking about their next uh, adventure quest. And Joe, it's like, I, Middle Korea is so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they're going to go because I guess they go on a really nice trip every year. Yeah. And so. And they can't be some, last year. No, no. Uh, so, but I, Donna wants to go to the Amazon, which sounds really great and beautiful and exciting and expensive. And uh, Joe's like, this will be great because I, my work is terrible. Uh, they cut the math club and math. <laughs> They just don't teach math anymore. So, um, yeah, which I don't know if they've been really teaching math for a while. <laughs> so my kids, <laughs> my kids. Uh, yeah. So Donna got, gets to thinking about uh, how to help Joe. And so she calls up Satan's niece, which turns out is April. Um, and uh, April comes out to see Donna and they're catching up on the time they were in Venezuela and all this different kind of stuff. And uh, Joe's like, Hey, what are you doing here? And uh, they talk about how Donna wants to take some of the money from her sale of this multi-million dollar, 3,400 square foot house. <laughs> with, view, and, with views of the space uh, and Puget Sound. Yes. Uh, take some of the, the commission from that and start a foundation for uh, education for, for teachers to be able to start clubs and stuff. Uh, after school and they call it teach yourself which is so the kids just get computers and have to figure it out yeah which is basically how life has been for our kids for a couple years now (laughs) you got a computer now look it up i'm gonna be over here making reels about how teaching sucks (laughs) is that a thing that's why we invented ai kids yeah just ask chat gtb i'm just here to grade chat gtp's papers (laughs) (laughs) In fact, you guys didn't have to come to school anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the future is looking great. Um, so yeah. So Do- Donna, Joe's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how. I, I want you to spend this money how you want. And Don's like, this is how I want to spend it. Uh, she's lived all her dreams, and now she wants to help Craig live some, uh, or Craig Joe live some of his. And so it's pretty awesome that this is all coming together. And it, so then it zooms back out to the office, and Craig comes in and he's freaking out at how messy it is. And, uh, Leslie then, uh, asks Craig to sign the requisition form. And, um, and so she's like, when, well, when I first met you, Craig, uh, I thought, wow, he's, there's a man who loves his job. And then I was like, oh wow, he's intense. No, he's insane. That, that, that person is psychotic and I need to call the police. <laughs> Craig's response is like, yeah, that's usually how it goes. <laughs> so, um, so then she's like, but you've come so far. I'm so proud of you. And Parks Department's in good hands. And she touches him and uses her future powers again <laughs> to look into Craig's future. Uh, and he's singing at Tom's Bistro. And it's like, wow, Craig has a really nice voice. This is great. Uh, and Tom comes over and he's like, nice crooning. And the gentleman over there sent you his, a glass of wine and his business card. Uh, and uh, so... Craig is looking at it and he looks up and it's Typhoon and his response is okay fine (laughs) but we also get a little hint with Tom as he's walking away Uh, he's like so as you all know um, and so that's Tom's story picks up at the same place later Um, and so uh, then we fast forward to Horatio Sands officiating a wedding for Craig and Typhoon about right Uh, and uh, um and so, yeah. And Ron, as we said last week, Ron is their best man. And so we just, Ron and Typhoon just met uh, just last episode. And like Ron being a best man in anyone, anyone's wedding is a miracle upon miracles. Um, and so something happened with this relationship with Typhoon and Ron that is like really meaningful that we don't get to see. Um, so then fast forward again. And they're on a, a space plane with like all glass, the most luxurious plane I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're eating dinner and Typh- it's like their anniversary. And uh, Typhoon says, uh, do you have any, Craig says, do you have any regrets? And Typhoon says, no, not a single one. Do you have any? And uh, <laughs> Craig is like, are you kidding? Thousand. <laughs> most recently, this trout. <laughs> <laughs> so so sweet and nice and it's like it's such a great like build up for like craig to still be craig right i loved it so yeah because who orders trout on a plane <laughs> i mean that's just that's just that's a closed area man like yeah especially considering, yeah <laughs> come like, on all 
plain food is essentially microwaved. <laughs> so they are microwaving fish on a fart tube. <laughs> it's like, this is terrible. <laughs> so but maybe the future makes fish less stinky. Maybe. I mean, it's uh, definitely, you know, up there with opening a bag of beef jerky on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Both oh. in there. <laughs> Yeah, what a daisy. <laughs> I didn't realize this was so pungent. Teriyaki birdcage? It must be the must be the air pressure and the altitude. So that's why I'm also crying on this plane. I was I watch Daddy's Home Too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the next step, they gotta get the uh this form, Craig signed it, they gotta get it approved, so they have to go up to the fourth floor. Uh, and, uh, April and Andy are going to go because April is like, this is the, uh, warrior's place on earth. I'm in and Andy calls shotgun for the elevator, uh, and then also push all the buttons. So, uh, so they go up there and, uh, they go see Ethel Beavers, who quickly is over her grief, uh, having lost Mayor Gunderson in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, she's using her tablet, her grizzle tablet. And, uh, and they're like, Ethel, we need you to file this. And she's like, we've gone digital. Get with the times you Luddite. (laughs) Uh, and, uh, so then she files it and, uh, Andy starts to like think like, uh, April's talking about, I'm going to miss all the fourth floor, the disturbing murals, the ominous lighting, the creepy people pan out. There's Kyle. (laughs) Wondering what Kyle does in this whole building. Like he was a lawyer or worked in legal or something, but turns out he also is right across from Ethel's desk for some reason. Uh, and, uh, and then April, so April is, uh, missing things. And then Andy's like, I'm going to miss the food, Taco Bell, KFC, Pizza Hut. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he looks at April, most of them are going to miss you, Leslie. And, uh, and I was like, well, that's great. But all those things, including me, will be with you in Washington. Uh, and Andy doesn't seem to believe it. So that's a great sentiment. Uh, and so Leslie's like, whatever happens, Ben and I are always there with you and they go in for a hug and April seems to not want the hug, uh, which is on key on point for April. But then we fast forward to their future and Janet Snakehole is, uh, in distress of some sort. The thieves are trying to steal the legendary Snakehole Sapphire and, uh, and Bert Macklin is there because that sapphire has the power to activate the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, so they are intense. And and so April is like, she loves it when he takes charge, or Janet, like, I love it when you take charge. Make love to me, you fool! And uh, and then the doorbell rings, and uh, Bert's like, rain check on that, all right? They're here. Uh, so they go out, and what is what is here? It's Halloween, and they're trick or treaters. And Andy loves them all so much, uh, and he gives them all kinds of candy. And one of the kids dressed up there is Star Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, has a little Star Lord mask on, so that's cute and fun. Um, because uh, I don't know if you know this, but Chris Pratt is Star Lord. Isn't that crazy? That oh wow, yeah, yeah, small world, right? Um. So when he's not Star Lording, he's pretending to be Burt Macklin of the FBI. When he's also not trying to save an island from dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. 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 And in doing so, he's really saving all of us from dinosaurs. Yeah. So um, yeah. So l- later, April is in the kitchen saying, Hey, we gotta hurry up and uh we gotta get moving, just put all the candy in a bowl. And he comes in and she's like, What's wrong? Did you read all the candy? He's like, no. Well, yeah, but <laughs> that's not what's wrong. <laughs> Yet. Uh, and he's like, seeing all those kids, I, it makes me want to put a babe in you, babe, which is the weirdest way to say that. Uh, and April's like, I don't want to have kids. Yes, it'd be awesome. All the gross stuff my body would go through. Uh, but I don't want to bring a kid into this world. That's disgusting. Um, and Andy, so, Andy's like, no, they wipe all the disgusting stuff off immediately. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't have to worry about that, babe. No, they take care yeah. of it for you. Yeah, the doctors are there. I mean, doctors and nurses, what are they other than baby cleaners? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, April does not want to have a kid. Andy is kind of bummed. They go over to Ben and Leslie's house. Uh, and, uh, you know, Leslie's like, hey, it's good to see Janet Snakehole and Burt Macklin. And they're like, what are you dressed as? And uh, Leslie is dressed as Sandra D. O'Connor. <laughs> and so it's a combo costume of Sandra D. from Greece and Sandra Day O'Connor from the Supreme Court. And, uh, 
And April's like, who's Sandra D? And Andy says, who's Sandra Day O'Connor? Perfect. Uh, which is a perfect uh, summation of their engagement with Leslie's life. Uh, and then Ben turns out he is the lamplighter uh, <laughs> from the sequel to Cones of Dunshire, Dunshire Winds of Tremora, <laughs> which Gameplay Magazine called punishingly intricate. <laughs> And that is one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because oh, you, and, you and I have engaged in some very intricate games and uh, yes. could only imagine how much more intricate the sequel would be to the original. Yeah. Knowing, just seeing them play it one time mm-hmm. and how many dice are involved. <laughs> <laughs> just throw it across just, the whole table. Like 30 dice. I just can't even. So, uh, yeah. So that was, uh, that was an excellent little joke. Uh <laughs> punishingly intricate uh and just the way he like and that's he's just, proud of that <laughs> yeah like this is the best thing in the world um I, before we dialed up here i was looking at youtube videos of board games so <laughs> Ooh, like anything, i love this good. stuff uh it was a it that uh, it was kind of going through my subscriptions of board game videos trying to see which one i wanted to watch so i didn't get actually watch any of them okay um but i was trying to put a little playlist together for later yeah gotcha all right well let me know so, if you come across any good games I will. Okay. Did you know there's a camel up card game? No. Yeah. We just bought that. I, we haven't played it yet, but we just bought it. All right. Anyway. Sounds good. Uh, so Andy's like, where are the kids? And Ben is like, they're out trick or treating. It's just a grown ups tonight. And he's like relieved, but it looks like Andy <laughs> is going to die. Well, yeah. He just slumps <laughs> down in the, in the couch and not in a subtle way. No. And so Ben and Leslie make eye contact and Ben's like, why don't you go help me in the kitchen real quick? And so Andy follows him. He's like, well, what do you need? And he's like, oh, nothing. I just wanted it to seem like you wanted to talk. And he's like, whoa, <laughs> that's a secret agent stuff right there. <laughs> so what I appreciate about this, though, like, I, did you ever watch Friends? Not really, no. Okay. In Friends, they would try to have side conversations. Mm. But you've seen the living room, right? Right. Very the living open, room, kitchen. Open contact. Very open. <clears throat> so, like, Monica would bring Rachel over into the kitchen to have a side conversation that she didn't want anybody else to hear, but she would speak at a normal volume mm-hmm. and like, we can all hear. Uh, you. Yeah. They're all right there. And we just had to believe like, no, it's too far away. <laughs> they can't hear. Um, and so I love what I appreciate about this is they actually had to go to a different room and they let that happen. Let the different room happen so they could have this conversation. Um, and Andy talks about wanting to have kids and, um, you know, talks about how he was playing it yesterday. He was at the park and saw like a bunch of eight year olds laughing and playing and having a good time. I almost started crying. Granted, I had just face planted on my rollerblades and that's why they were laughing at <laughs> <laughs> Ben. Sure. Um, and so then April is like with Leslie, like, I know what you're saying. We should have kids cause they're great and they're change your life and drive you nuts, but it's worth it. Uh, beauty, majesty, glory, all those morning faces, blah, 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 blah. Right. And April's like, but you guys got lucky. You had sex one time and you had three kids and they're all way cooler than you and your lives are perfect. And, uh, and so, yeah, so she's like putting all the reasons not to have kids and Leslie calmly out of character for her is basically like no one's life is perfect, but you have kids because you're a good team and you want to bring more people into your team. And, uh, and she's like, so should we have kids? And Leslie says, I don't know if you should have kids, but I like your team. And, uh, which is like the best advice you can give to somebody who doesn't know what to do is not tell them what to do, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. right? To yeah, to tell them know. to go watch an episode of Parks and Rec. Yeah, well, here, go watch this episode of Parks and Rec, and then let's talk about it later. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a podcast recommendation. <laughs> start at the beginning. They'll start with episode one, mm-hmm. and then they'll go to episode uh, season eight, episode one, and then they'll go back to season one, episode two. It's fine. You'll know what to do after that. Trust me. Yeah, it'll all work out. Um, so then fast forward to April and uh, and Andy and Dr. Saperstein. Because <laughs> for some reason, they went to Pawnee uh, and brought all of their like baby stuff. Like they're going to have a baby. Uh, like And they take it all to the hospital, like their go bag or whatever. Um, with like art, like picture frames and all. It's a lot. And maybe that's what people do now. I don't know. Um, but uh, Dr. Saperstein is the only uh, OBGYN in Pawnee. Uh, and so he's able, he's there to help them. Uh, and uh, 
April is dressed up like some kind of like haunted demon. Uh, and and he like more exorcist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so possessed, possessed. Yeah. And babe, uh, Andy's like, babe, you look more beautiful now than I've ever seen you. And, uh, and Dr. Zapstein looks at her. Wow. <laughs> just, just your luck. You're going into labor on Halloween. And he's like, can we watch this makeup off? And he was like, no, I put it on after I went into labor. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so they're going to have this baby and Andy, uh, just like put on the, the birth mix and they play monster match. <laughs> so, which is gross. Um, and so, uh, baby is born and then Andy and April are laying in the bed together looking at their baby uh, and trying to come up with a name for the baby. April's suggestion is Demon Spawn Baby Satan Dwyer. And Andy's like, yeah, I like that. Or maybe Bert Snakehole Ludgate Karate Dracula Macklin Demon Jack-O-Lantern Dwyer. We call him Jack for short. Perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a great name. And so then Leslie and Ben come and... Uh, they want to see the baby and she's like i want to see my godchild i'm assuming i'm the godparent right we, we can talk about that later uh and ben's like holding gifts he's like congrats i know it came unexpectedly but pretty cool he was born in pawnee so now you can be president of pawnee i guess uh and he's like i have so many presents it's weird and he's like yes oh for the baby <laughs> <laughs> just put them over there <laughs> uh and so a uh leslie asks the name and it's jack and let's like, that's good. Uh, welcome to the team, little guy. Uh, so I think, ben do, you th do you think she like, like the name? I mean, Jack is a good name, but do you think she was almost more relieved that it wasn't something like demon karate hell spawn Dwyer? Like, do you think that's when she was like, Oh, that's good. Like, that's it, what I took yeah. away. Like she was almost mm -hmm. more relieved that they didn't call him something ridiculous, like Aeon flux or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just really thought Leslie was just happy. Yeah. Okay. So I don't we'll, know. We'll, we'll let it be that. You you can have whatever feelings you want to have. Okay. Thanks. So they might be wrong, but no. we'll go for it. It's all right. Uh, so then we cut back to the fourth floor, and Ethel is just like, "Take this down to maintenance." <laughs> uh, and so, um, so they uh, they head out, and uh, and Les like, "I know just the person to accompany me." And Kyle's like, "I'm a little busy right now." <laughs> Not you, Kyle. <laughs> So uh, the person to accompany her is Tom Haverford. And she's talking about all the great things they've done, how many times we've gone to maintenance. Uh, and and it's like, it's just like that we make this journey one final time. And Tom has had uh, air, 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 earbuds in. And it's like, what's that? Nothing. Uh, and uh, But they had a wire. That was the only thing. Like, Yeah, they. I still use the wired earphones sometimes. <laughs> you know, if the batteries on my AirPods are dead, I use... Uh, I'll plug in the old uh, lightning connector on my into my phone, which is the dumbest thing. But yeah, I did it last weekend. Now, so, who's the yeah. Bud Light now? Yeah, I just go retro. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, yeah, retro to like three years ago. Um, so they're on their way to maintenance, and they who do they run into? John Raphael Saberstein in a wheelchair, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> He's like, hey, what are you two bad Larry's up to? And I don't know what a bad Larry is, and I refuse to look it up. <laughs> so, um, and uh, and so, let, uh, let's like this is our last day in Pawnee, and we have one last problem to fix. And and John Raphael stands up. <laughs> He's like, hold up, you're leaving for truth. Uh, and he tries, he hugs Leslie and sniffs her hair. <laughs> and like, I'm going to miss you so much. And it's like, wait, wait, you're not injured. Uh, yeah, I'm injured. I got a terminal case of give me to the front of the line at six flags. <laughs> <laughs> Shaboosh. And then Tom and uh, John Ralphio do their little handshake and it ends with it's a winter wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> well, they blow something out of their like palms. Snow. First. snow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> totally, totally a drug reference. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. And uh, and so John Ralph is, well, I'm sad to see you go, but you'll do me one final ki kindness. Will you pretend to be my wife for an insurance scam? <laughs> but then we fall in love for real. <laughs> also going to have a pair of your gym socks. Don't worry. <laughs> it's not for anything. Or it's just a fetish I have. <laughs> uh, and so then uh, Leslie's like, puts her hand on his shoulder like, although I truly hope I never see you again. I do wish you a long and happy life. And this is in 2017 as all this is happening. Cut to John Ralphio's uh, headstone and then at uh, 1985 to 2002. 
and we are at the funeral of John Ralphio Saperstein and uh, the rabbi is uh, <laughs> is like today we say goodbye to John Ralphio Saperstein as per his last will and testament we will now listen to his favorite song Bend Over by Lil John <laughs> featuring Tyga <laughs> and then that song plays <laughs> I just love that pan across all of the people going what is happening yes and then it zooms out to John Ralphio and Mona Lisa. And they're like, okay, they bought it. Do you have the insurance money? No doubt, no doubt. Uh, and so they are going to start a casino in Tajikistan. And then they start singing that word, Tajikistan. And the rabbi is like, John Ralphio? Uh, and uh, so they have to run. Uh, and John Ralphio's running. He's like, Tajikistan is off. Tajikistan is off. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, so then back to the hallway with John Ralphio and Leslie and Tom. And uh, and so uh, John, she's like, so we have the swing to fix. So let's go. And John Ralphio's like, Leslie, I've always loved you. She looks at him and is like, I know. <laughs> and he jumps up and does a little kick thing. And it's a great little send off for, for John Ralphio. And I like how in, in his send, like in his future and then with Mona Lisa Saperstein in there as well. So she didn't get her, you know, in the now timeline, but in his timeline, she got a final like scene too. Yes. So they're wrapping everything up. They're bringing it all together. Um, so yeah, so they go to maintenance and, uh, they, um, unless he's talking about all that Tom's accomplished and, uh, and, but they find out that the door is locked because maintenance is closed on Friday. Um, and Tom is going to solve the problem. And, uh, and yeah, so then let's like, oh, you've done so much. I'm so proud of you. And Tom's like, I'm proud of me too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, she puts her hand on his shoulder and then we get the future again. And this is where we run into Tom's story at the bistro, giving the car to, um, uh, to Craig and then, uh, moving through to, to talk to his investor or his, uh, consultants and his consultants are, uh, Ron and Ben and Donna. So he's talking about all of the um, big things that he wants to do and he wants their advice. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. And we're not really sure um, what it all means, but he wants to have this huge expansion opportunity. And uh, and so like, yeah, you're set up, you're good to go. Real estate's good right now. Uh, and, uh, and so taking their advice is like, all right, we're doing this. In the next five years, there's going to be 20 Tom's Bistros across America. And uh, look out world, Tommy's about to blow up. It cut to a documentary uh, with Tom uh, <laughs> narrating, very, much like he did with the Lil Sebastian documentary. Yeah, with a very, very poor accent. Yeah. And blow up he did, <laughs> but not in a good way. Uh, and so you zoom out from the TV and he's, watching this documentary that he made for himself and he's very sad and Lucy's like you got to stop watching that <laughs> I can't try and turn myself away it's a whole documentary about my failures and Lucy's just like that you made <laughs> <laughs> and worst of and, all swaggerless yeah that's the hardest part um but the uh this documentary reminded me of the uh Michael Jordan uh last dance last dance yeah because and like much like the last dance, it was funded by the person who focused on who the documentary was focused on. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just found that to be hilarious. So, uh, yeah, so Tom doesn't really know what to do with his life. He's lost everything. And Lucy is like, you know what? You uh, had a tough break. Stock market <coughs> tanked, credit dried up. Who could have predicted that the country would run out of beef? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to move on. Uh, and so, but Jesus doesn't know what to do cause he was so responsible and he still went broke and, um, and Luke's like, well, we'll come up with something. You, we'll be fine. You, you always come up with new ideas. And, uh, so then we cut to Tom giving a speech talking about his past failures, entertainment 720, Tommy, uh, Tommy's rent a swag. Uh, and then Tommy, Tom's bistro, they all failed. Um, and, and, but America's not just built on second or third chances. Mm -hmm. It's about fourth, fifth, sixth, twentieth, and fiftieth chances, and uh, that's how I got to where I am today. Best-selling author of Failure, an American Success Story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So then he is talking about the different uh, kinds of people in his book that he is profiling, 
And so we have Andy and each person has a slide and three characteristics. Uh, and, and these are all folks from the parks department, Andy, April, Ben, Leslie, Don, uh, Ron, Donna, or Tom, but who do you never want to be? A uh, Gary. Everybody in everybody the audience. Yeah. Out. Everybody yeah. knows already. And Gary is there. He's like, he's talking about me. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. So afterwards, uh, they, Tom or Tom is talking uh, with Leslie and Ben, and uh, he's like, "Thank you so much for all you've done. You've always been there for me. I inscribed you a copy of my book." And Ben reads it. He's like, "When I think of success, I think of you. You are a true inspiration to me. I love you." Oh, Tom Haverford, and Tom's like, "Oh, that's actually for Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Here's yours." It's about right. <laughs> Open it up, and Leslie says, "Best wishes." <laughs> I mean, every word of it. <laughs> Uh, so then zoom back out to the uh, the outside the maintenance office and uh, let's like, so how are we going to fix this? Do we hold a public forum, have a rally, smash the door down and do some looting? And Tom's like, no, we're just going to call the most powerful man in Pawnee. Cut to Jer- Gary Gergich, mayor of Pawnee. And he just calls a guy up, calls up Jim. He's like, hey, I hate to bother you, but two of my best friends, <laughs> Leslie Nope and Tom Haverford, <laughs> Tom busts up. Uh, we need the floor, the first floor maintenance room open. Okay, great. My best to Luis and the girls. Uh, and so he's just winning by positivity. Right. Gary Gergich. So good. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you're all set. And, uh, and Leslie's like, oh, you saved our butts. I'm so happy that you get to be mayor. And... Uh, are you enjoying yourself? And he's like, yes, this is the, this is a great, I know it's ceremonial, but, uh, I just don't know how my life could get any better than this. And, uh, they are, uh, Leslie's using her future powers again <laughs> and, uh, cut to per happily <laughs> saying an eternal events, both shocking and unexpected <laughs> interim mayor. Gary Gergich was officially elected today. Thanks to a massive writing campaign. And so he is interviewing Mary Gergich. What are your plans for your actual first term? He's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. This is so crazy. I just hope I do a good job and I promise I'm going to try my best. Uh, How refreshingly and, uh, honest. Yeah. And then a new, another cut and Gary is being sworn in by Brandy Max, the president of city council. City council. Uh, and we come to find out that this is his fourth term that he's being sworn into. Uh, and then cut again to uh, Morris <laughs> uh, swearing in Gary Gergich for his 10th time, proving conclusively that in these corporate states of America, it's the entrenched powers who hold all the cards. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Councilman Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Gary just does, does just... not take any of that. He's like, thank you. <laughs> uh, and then cut to old Gary and uh, Vampire Gale, uh, Ageless Gale. Uh, at his hundredth birthday, yeah, and uh, they are celebrating his wonderful uh, life. And Gary, uh, uh, Gary's like, I have had the perfect life. I've had the perfect marriage, the perfect gr- children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. I just love you all so much. And so they all get together to have a big old family picture uh, for the Gergiches. Um, and then next cut. We learned that Mayor Gary Gergich died, a newscaster saying, died peacefully in his sleep on his 100th birthday, holding the hand of his beloved wife, Gail. And then it cuts to the the uh, place, what is it called? Cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> and the dead holding. The dead, the dead holder place. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so Ben and Leslie are there. And, uh, and Ben is like, man, Gail looks amazing. <laughs> 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 and I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the person officiating the service is like, uh, we, he will now, Indi- uh, Gary will now be given the Indiana Notary Society's highest honor, the 21 <laughs> stamp salute. <laughs> and they, there's just seven notaries. <laughs> they <laughs> stamp the, the, casket three times. <laughs> it's so weird. The, the, uh, the officiant was, was Pillboy. It was Bill Boy yeah. from uh, The Good Place. Yeah. yeah, and his character's name is Minister Zorpax Seven. <laughs> <laughs> so the so reasonableist came the, back into power. Reasonableist. Well, was Gary? <laughs> did Gary get converted? You know, I don't know. Oh, maybe he's always been a reasonableist. Could he just couldn't make it to that one meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the uh, 
Ben then notices that they spelled Gary's name wrong on the tombstone. <laughs> and uh, it was like, yeah, close enough. Yeah. Which is what is great about that is the people who decide what's on the tombstone are the family. Right. <laughs> so that's on them. Uh, and then somebody comes up and speaks to them both and says, it's time to go. Like, so a uh, secret service type person. Right. Which then is like, what is happening right now? So exciting. So here's my question for you. Mm-hmm. Who is the primary person that this secret service person is protecting? Leslie Nope. You think it's Leslie? I do. All right. Me too. Due to future events and information we find out in the future. In this episode. Yeah, today. We'll find out later. Yeah. <laughs> in just a little bit. Moments from so, now. Yeah, as soon as we get through this section where we're talking about finding out later. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because that's where the anticipation is. Yeah. Really, when you so, drag it out mm-hmm. and make it last longer mm-hmm. than it needs to be, almost where it's like annoying. Yeah. You're like, yeah, we get it, guy. Stop. But there's no one there to actually do that. <laughs> Except unless you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> oh, so right. anyway, yeah. they <laughs> then go to the park uh, and uh, Leslie is with Shauna. And she's like, how's this for a headline? Still swinging. Park gang reunites it for one last bang. Mm. <laughs> Shauna, it's a little dirty. <laughs> It's like, well, sex sells. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so Ron is fixing the swing and uh, he fixes it all up. He says, I calculate the cost of my labor at $38. Wow. I, can, I wish. I can, I can send you the bill. Uh, and so Les like, are you going to stick around here? And he's like, I don't know where I would go. Um, and she says, well, we'll come back a lot. And you know what they say, don't be a stranger. So she reaches over and hold, uh, holds Ron's hand, which is like a a massive thing that Ron would let anybody else touch him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so then we cut to the future and Trevor, the only lawyer in town mm-hmm. uh, is uh, t- giving a financial report essentially and saying how the company is in good hands because of the stewardship of the, the chairman, Ron Swanson. Would you like to say anything, uh, Mr. Chairman? And Ron stands up and is like, I resign as chairman as he, as Trevor's talking, he's just Ron's staring off in the distance and uh, he's, Gets up, he's like, I, re- I resign as chairman, effective immediately. Uh, and Trevor's like, why? <laughs> Would you like to explain? Like, no. no. Uh, so then Don, Ron's brother, is like, should we discuss your retirement package? He's like, just give me what's fair. And they're agreed. And then Ron's other brother, Vaughn, stands up. He's like, best of luck. <laughs> like, totally chill in, in most people's understanding of what's happening right now. And Ron's like, don't get emotional, Vaughn. You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and he leaves and Trevor's like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then we see uh, Ron going to Ben and Leslie's house uh, and uh, probably in DC. Uh, and it, she has shown, he shows her a picture. He's like, your family's amazing. They're wonderful. They must be very proud. And like, yes, Ivy was just accepted at Stanford university. Uh, and uh <laughs> And Ben's like, wow, it's going to be expensive. She's taking my advice. He's like, yes, I sold some of my gold and officially diversified my portfolio and zoom out. And they're at the Lagavulin distillery. And Ron now owns 51% of Lagavulin. And uh, and so Ron's pretty stoked. Zoom back to the living room. And uh, and so Les is like, so what brings you here? And Ron says, I'm at a crossroads. And I made a huge mistake one time. We're not talking to you. And I don't intend to repeat that error. So they go, uh, let's like, let's go for a walk. There's a cute little park nearby. It's the wash. The, that's the Washington mall. Then that, and like, it's the Washington monument, the Lincoln cathedral, Lincoln monument. They're right there. And they're talking on this nice little bench. And, uh, it's Leslie's bench. Yeah. And so Ron's like, I don't know what to do. My kids are growing up. Uh, my days in an office feel like a waste. I would like to turn my attention to something bigger. Make me feel useful. But I don't know what that is. And so Les is like, all right, say no more. I'm going to have to spend every waking moment trying to figure this out for you. Uh, and it's like, you want to stay for dinner? We're having steak. It's like, oh. but we're also hosting several members of the House Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs. I'll take that steak to go, please. And thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so cut to the Pawnee National Park. And, uh, and Leslie's there and she's meeting Ron. And, uh, and he's like, this is a great park that you have put together. If you had more meetings here, I would have come to them. <laughs> uh, and, uh, 
And so like she's Ron just like, this is a great piece of land you saved. And she says, thank you. Would you want to run it? And so through some moving around of different folks, this position has become open and less like, I, I want you to take care of this place. And, uh, Ron's first objection is working for the federal government. Unless he cuts him off, like you would be walking around the land alone. You live in the same town you've always lived in. You'd work outside. You'd talk to bears. <laughs> Next argument. <laughs> uh, he's like, well, there must be dozens of people going for the job. I, I wouldn't want to ruffle feathers. Am I qualified? And he's like, well, a few people might be annoyed. They'll get over it. As far as your quali- qualification go, you're Ron Swanson. <laughs> Stop being a dummy and accept. Uh, and so he's like, when do I start? And oh, right now. I, I signed up for you already. <laughs> Um, so then she introduces him to the rangers at the park, uh, who some of them would definitely be annoyed because <laughs> they are in line for these jobs. Uh, and, uh, and Ron is just says, um, my name is Ron Ulysses Swanson. Your job and mine is to walk this land and make sure no one harms it. If you show up on time, speak honestly and treat everyone with fairness, we will get along just fine, but hopefully not too fine as I am not currently looking for any new friends. <laughs> End of speech. <laughs> so, yeah. So now Ron is the, uh, director of the park. Uh, the head ranger. And, uh, and so, um, he has his canoe there that he actually made himself, uh, Nick Offerman. And he goes out and, uh, starts doing the work, listening to some Willie Nelson throughout the park, paddling his canoe. Yes. It's good. It's a good thing. So, uh, so then cut back to the park and the swing, uh, and Leslie and, uh, Let's see, has a moment of panic and she tells Ben, like, I think we need to stay here forever and never change. And Ben's like, no, we have things to do. We got to pick up our kids. We got to catch that flight. And I was like, when, are we, when will we all be together again? And he's just like, someday. I'll, it'll happen. Um, and uh, so then we cut to their future. Um, and uh, they're in a nice house. <laughs> and this is 2022. Uh, and <laughs> Uh, and it, it is the White House, <laughs> which is so crazy that that's how it all came. Like Joe Biden was the president right. in 2022 because yeah. <laughs> they're in his house and they, they're having all these people over. And uh, and Jill Biden is like, we're great. You're all here. Uh, there's one rule, no shop talk. Uh, and so you have to wait till after dinner. I'm looking at you, Leslie. And Leslie just really wants to play charades. And Joe Biden, I was like, okay. <laughs> Last time she was here for three and a half hours. Um, and so, but while Leslie is talking uh, to somebody, um, she says, you know, I've said it before and I say it again. Joe Biden knows his way around a seafood risotto. <laughs> you said that before. Said that before. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So then they, this person presents the idea of running for governor because the uh, incumbent isn't going to run again. And um, and so she's like, oh, wow. And so like, Leslie, you should run for governor. And she's, Leslie's not thinking about it. And then we cut to, oh, sorry, I hit my mic. And then we cut to Ben talking to some people. Um, and uh, and Jen Barkley shows up. And she like pushes people out of the way. And she's like, Jen, I didn't know you'd be here. And Jen's like, I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and just directly, you want to be governor of Indiana? Uh, and... So, uh, yeah, so Ben has to think about this and uh, Jen's like, you'd be perfect for this candidate, local hero, state government experience, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, the only thing that could hurt you is that devastatingly <laughs> nerdy cones of Dunjar thing. <laughs> and he's like, oh, that's a problem. I'm sorry, but the ninth highest selling multiplayer figuring based strategy fantasy sequel game in history. Uh, please don't bail on me because of what just happened. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's a great way to start a <laughs> sentence to defend yourself. <laughs> uh, and so then later, Leslie and Ben are in the car and they're like, oh, something interesting happened to me. Uh, and she's like, the Janet from the DNC said I should run for mayor of Indiana. And Ben's like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> 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 and like, oh, what? What? Because Jen just approached me about running. And so then they realize that this is a problem. So they get back to the house and they are making a pros and cons list. And the pros and cons are the same for both people <laughs> running for office. Um, so they solved it. And uh, so then they are, they're getting ready for dinner as they're talking about this and they call their kids out for dinner and they're like, it's dinner time. And they come running down and they basically Tasmanian devil all of dinner and then they leave and all that's left is broccoli. <laughs> and uh, Ben's like, well, you want some broccoli? And I was like, Ugh, no. <laughs> so, um, 
so they they have a plan to go back to Indiana uh, to to Pawnee, and they're like, let's just go there, and we'll think about it when we get back. And so they uh, go to like the the city hall, and they're walking through the parks department, and Les is like, oh, I should talk to Ron or Tom or April or Donna, Andy even. <laughs> Sometimes he's he can be wise, uh, and I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. We should call them, or we could talk to them in person. And they open the door, and finally, Andy's right about yelling surprise. surprise. And uh, and so they're all there. And Ben is like, got them all there for her. And like, he's like, this is what you always wanted, right? These people in the same room at the same time. And let's like, I don't know how it could be better. And she's like, want to bet? And then Anne and Chris show up. And <laughs> Leslie just freaks out that Anne's here. Shoves um, Ben out of the way. Yeah, it's all wonderful. They have the whole team together in one place. Again, um, like at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, except now with Anne and Chris. Right. So it's, it's, it, that's why it's better. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so they're all going to catch up for a while. Um, and, uh, Leslie is giving, gives Chris a bunch of, uh, nicknames or descriptors for, uh, for Leslie, uh, for that he can use with Anne. Uh, Leslie talks about how Anne's hair looks great. And she's like, it's the pills I was telling you about. And Leslie's like, I took some of those. <laughs> they didn't do anything, but they just upset my stomach. And she's like, oh, you're supposed to crack them and put them on your hair overnight. It's like, oh, well, that's confusing. Cause they're delicious. <laughs> And Tom's talking to Don about his book and uh, failure 2.0, fail, failing to fail. Um, and uh, Ben is like, I took that your test too. And uh, turns out I'm a Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit. Um, and uh, so that's upsetting. But Tom uh, is kind of upset with Donna because she's going nonprofit. And uh, and she's like, yeah, you're right. Um, maybe I have changed. By the way, what time is it? And she lifts up her wrist and she's like, it's half past Splut Al. Because <laughs> the watch, she's got this really nice watch, a lot of diamonds. Um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, and then Anne and April talk and April's like, your kids are like surprisingly awesome. Did you give an egg donor or give Chris a hall pass for, <laughs> for a night? Uh, and he's like, no, those are my children. Uh, and so... So then we get the list of great descriptors for Anne. Uh, you rainbow infused space unicorn. You spassy sassy. You you beautiful sassy mannequin come to life. You opulent tree shark. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's all things that Chris will be able to use, uh, which is better than the nutrient rich r- nutrient rich chia seed. Sure. Um, so yeah. So and Chris is and they're talking and Andy comes by trip trigger you old son of a gun. <laughs> And he's like, Andy, it's Chris, is it? <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and then uh, Ron meets Jack Swan, uh, Jack Dwyer, and uh, just impressed with his handshake. And um, and Donna's like, so are you guys going to try to have another one? And April, like covertly, is like, shh, and points to her uh, her stomach, and it's like, shh, because he's sleeping. <laughs> How can you tell? <laughs> uh, and then Ben is explaining uh, some of the to, April, to Anne some of the rules for Cones of Dunshire, and uh, Anne looks like she's going to die. And uh, and then Leslie comes along. He's like, "It's happening! It's happening! Our kids are falling in love." And so her, their, uh, one of her sons and, or no, one of her daughters and Oliver are talking, and. Uh, and so they're like, "We have to pretend like this is bad, and if we want this to." work we have to pretend to disapprove and uh leslie's daughter looks up and leslie's like big thumbs up and like waving and like yay and uh yeah so she can't help it then we come to find out that chris and ann are going to come back uh and he's going to run admissions at indiana and uh yeah so people are coming back to pawnee it's wonderful it's beautiful um and then uh yeah ron's like i took your quiz i'm a ron uh, and Tom's like, I, I'm usually a Tom, but sometimes I'm a Donna. And, and then Ben like, yeah, last time I took it, I was a Tom. And so Tom freaks out. He's like, I gotta go recalibrate the quiz. <laughs> uh, so he leaves and, uh, then we cut to Ben and Leslie talking. Like, do you talk to anybody about Ryan for governor? And she says, no, we've been too busy catching up. And, uh, Leslie's like, we should just flip a coin because, you know, no guarantee we're going to win. And, uh, you know, it's not like this is the only option for us. So yeah, let's just flip a coin. And, and that's like you, you, the person who is like the most control person ever want to flip a coin. Um, and she's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. But 
everybody will participate. They'll sign it. And then that coin will eventually get into the Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. So, um, so they go out and, uh, and let's like everybody gather around. First of all, it's great to have you all here in the same room. Our children are here. It's great. The greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of America. And secondly, Ben and I have an announcement and Ben jumps in. Leslie is running for governor and everybody's super excited. Uh, and Leslie is like shocked. Uh, and Ben's like, yeah, it just makes sense. Indiana native, supremely qualified. And she wrote that she wanted to be governor in her kindergarten dream journal. Um, and so, yeah, so Leslie's running for governor and Ben's going to run her campaign cause he's a genius and he's got a tight, compact little body, like an Italian sports car, <laughs> <laughs> which is the exact qualification you want mm-hmm. <laughs> for a, uh, campaign manager. So, um, so then, yeah, so there she's running for governor and then we, uh, cut to Leslie giving a speech about, uh, public service. Um, and that in, she's talking at Indiana, like a commencement speech, right? Yeah. A, a graduate commencement, commencement speech at Indiana university, Indiana state university of Indiana. I don't know. It's a red school communists. And, uh, the, so she starts talking about her, her job and her serving two terms as governor of Indiana. That's why and, they're Hoosiers. Cause it's what? like Hoosier, like Hoosier, like who's your leader? Who's your, who's in charge? Exactly right. That that makes a lot of sense now. Communists. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Go go on. Uh, Yeah. So, uh, so Leslie talks about having two terms as governor and now a new unknown challenge awaits her, which is like president Leslie Nope. That's kind of what they're putting out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, yeah. And so she gives the speech and everybody's the, the whole parks team is there and it pans across them. Like, it's so great to have people, you get to do the work, with people you love. And, uh, and so this concludes her speech saying, uh, I thank those who have walked with me and I thank you for this honor. Now go find your team and get to work and people cheer. And then the, like the Dean, I don't know, in honor of governor Nope's honorary doctorate from the school of public policy in, in recognition of all she has done for the people of Indiana, the campus library will henceforth bear her name. <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts to Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then back to the park and Ron's like, yeah, that should do it. The swing is fixed. And that guy is there <laughs> and it's like, well, there you have it. Another problem solved by the hard work of dedicated public servants. And he's just like, okay, great. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's about right. Uh, so, uh, so they, uh, Gary's like, we got to get a picture. Gail made me promise. And so they all get a group picture. And Tom's like, the light's all wrong. I'm going to send you a glamour shot. Just Photoshop me in later. Uh, and uh, in April, I'm not going to show up because I'm like a vampire. Mm-hmm. And, and he's like, uh, for this picture, should I be Burt Macklin, Johnny Karate, or my new character, Sergeant Thunderfist MD? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, where'd you find that stethoscope? <laughs> in the sandbox. <laughs> Which the question is, why is that in the sandbox? That's terrible. Uh, and Donna's like, go Macklin. Macklin's the hottest. Uh, and so Ron just wants to get this over with. I can't hold the smile forever. I look ridiculous. <laughs> and he has not been smiling. Uh, and uh, yeah, so they get the picture. And Ben's like, are you ready? And Leslie says, yes, I'm ready. And that's it. Credits roll. And it's a bunch of bloopers over uh, the Traveling Wilburys song. Uh, it's all right. and. Uh, yeah, you see the whole cast doing bloopers. And then Mike Schur says, that is a series wrap on Parks and Recreation. The end. We did it. Wow. Ah, man. Great, great finale. What a journey. It was. What a journey it's been. Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I love the end of this show. I think it ended wrapped really well. It's 9.5 <clears throat> on IMDb. Yeah. That's really, really impressive. When most shows don't know how to end... Like this and Breaking Bad, probably the best endings of series of all time. Mm-hmm. I'd agree. So yeah, better than Seinfeld. Yeah, I did hear a rumor from Jerry. It's coming back. Because we're, we're close. That he's they're working on something. They're gonna wreck Don. I don't know what they're gonna do. We'll I hope they get out Dexter. of. I hope they get out of prison, and they're just still terrible. Well, of course. <laughs> I mean, they have to so, be. Yeah, that's all I really want. So more terribleness. Yeah, no, this was, 
<clears throat> this was a great, I think this is one of the best finales of really any, like you said, any show, uh, you know, yeah, not just, a, not just a sitcom. And I think it's because of the way they, like you said, it's a future clip show and it allowed the, you know, closure for everyone for, you know, the time period that we knew them, but then also like in, in the parks and rec department, but then also that they have futures and it ends up well, it's like a pro it's like, it's almost like an entire episode of post-credit epilogue of like, you know, any eighties movie. You know, so-and-so went on to do this and. Yeah. It's basically yeah. a tribute to animal house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what they were going for. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, but I think that, and that worked and, and it's like it, basically saying it's over, but it's not. And they're never, it's not that they're never going to see each other again because they do all throughout these flash forwards. They all are still in each other's lives. So yeah. I just like that idea of the show lives on, <clears throat> even though we're not truly watching it or there's not, you know, it just keeps going, which is, is right. And on so many other shows, just like, this is it. This is the end. And there's nothing after this. Right. We're, we're told our friends from Pawnee mm -hmm. are going to be okay. Yeah. And they're going to stay friends. Nice. And yeah, it's yeah. nice. It's comforting. So, and they kind of did a similar type of thing with the office finale, mm -hmm. right? Where they fast forward to a year and a year later and, you know, everybody comes back for the last show, uh, except for D'Angelo, because he's probably dead <laughs> after a terrible dunk accident. Um, <laughs> I love D'Angelo Vickers. Uh, so, yeah. Oh my gosh. The air... The air juggling. <laughs> I never touch another man's instrument. <laughs> Have you ever, did you ever see the one where somebody actually like computer generated the, the juggling balls? No. Into it. Oh, look it up. It's fantastic. All right. I'll uh, try to remember to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, listeners, we are done. This is it. I don't want, uh, so I don't want to be done. I know. How do you say goodbye? You got to sing <laughs> some boys to men. Let's fast forward. What are we going to do in, in the future? Do you think? Uh, you and me? Yeah. Cause well, like, tonight I'm going to watch minority report, which is also about the future. So oh, that's good. That going for me. Wow. That's a good segue. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm probably going to go to space. You should go. You should totally go. Isn't that fun? <laughs> that's fun. Everything's fun. Everything's fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. We're going to do more podcasts. Yeah, we'll do more okay. of this. That's cool. Um, I think we mentioned next it. Next one up is uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine in the Sure Mike Sure Universe. Yeah. So podcast Nine Nine. So you may see our logo and graphics change. Oh man, it's still us. It's still us, listener. Um, so if you are have any thoughts on Parks and Rec, please email us. Favorite moments of the of the show, uh, your top four episodes or whatever. Send them to parksandconversation at gmail.com. Like and review. Subscribe. Uh, please leave reviews on speedysigns.com. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as always, uh, you know, enjoy television, I guess. I've never actually said that before. <laughs> so. As I've always said. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. Enjoy television. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, parting is something gonna happen it's gonna it's, it's inevitable <laughs> let it go yeah. all okay. right hey well, what I'll do you uh... think <laughs> i'm like the guy, i'm like the guy who just stands at the door as you're trying to like go to bed like mm -hmm. continue that conversation just don't i don't want to let it go yeah you are like that guy well, <laughs> see ya <laughs> big gulps huh big gulps. <laughs> All right. Well, we, but, but we do, we have one more, one more wrap up episode. So that's good. Yeah. All right. The, the retrospective. <sighs> I can. All so right. It's, it'll be all right. It's an outro. All right. Well, all right. Talk to you later. Until then. Bye.